Hi there, this is John from Wineworks. I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk to you about Rosé Wine. I was back in London recently and very excited about the buzz surrounding Rosé Wine. Saw lots of people drinking it, people drinking it in pubs, people ordering it in restaurants. I saw people bringing it to dinner parties. Uh, it's a very exciting time at the moment for this wine. Whole aisles dedicated to rosé uh, in the supermarkets. So I'm just going to take some time to explain to you a little bit about the wine, how it's made and why it is so awesome and delicious. I think rosé suffered a little bit at the hands of misconception. I mean years ago we had Matthews and we had a lot of white Zinfandel coming out of California. These were traditionally sweet wines which isn't the case anymore. Rosé can be a whole broad spectrum of taste. Um, and the fact that it was pink as well, I think a lot of people thought, well, you know, the drink for the ladies. Well, that's not the case. Real men drink pink and they're proud to do so and they're letting everybody know. So I want to give you just a little bit of a background of how rosé is made. Let's, uh, let's talk about how rosé uh, came about in North America. So years ago in California, um, the demand for white wine far outstripped that of red wine. Um, and eventually, uh, white grapes started to become scarce. So what they started to do was they started to make white wine from red grapes. So what they would do is they crush the red grapes, the juice would come out of the grapes, and then they take the skins off the juice so there would be no color extracted from the skins and then you can make the white wine. And then eventually what started to happen was they would leave the grape skins on the juice for a short period of time, thus extracting a little bit of color and you'd get like a pink hue to the wine. So the longer you leave the grape skins on the juice, the more intense the color of the wine. So you can get a lighter pink and then a slightly darker pink. So what you've got is you've got the counterparts of the red wines that you're used to drinking. So you can make rosé from Grenache, you can make it from Syrah, you can make it from Merlot. The great thing about rosé is its versatility. It's served chilled, so it's like a white wine, but you also get a lot of the characteristics from the varietals that it's made from. So, for example, it's really good with barbecue food. It's great with chicken, great with barbecue sausages, burgers, but in the same way, because it's chilled, it's also a fantastic counterpart for seafood salad, for example. So if you ever feel that you're in two minds about what to drink, red or white, rosé is often a great choice. Something else I should mention is rosé wine far outsells white wine in France. Now, as an Englishman, I'm not in the habit of heaping praise on the French, obviously, but let's face it, the French do know their wine. So I'm very excited to announce that as of February the 28th, we will have an Australian Grenache Rosé at Wineworks. We're taking pre-orders now, so if you want to call us at the shop or email us, you can get your name down. It's first come, first served. This wine will be ready to drink in the summer and it's a perfect summer sipper. And those of you that like sparkling wine, we can sparkle it for you because everybody loves pink bubbly. And just as a side note, chaps, the ladies love it. You order rosé in the pub or bring some rosé to a dinner party and you are going to look like a man who is very confident in his masculinity. My missus, she loves me in pink. <laughs>